Chapter Six of Our Little Jewish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Jewish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter Six Queer Sights. Would you like to go shopping with me? said Esther's mother the next afternoon. I must buy some things you children will need to carry with you on your visit. Esther and Miriam jumped up from their play. They were always ready to go shopping. They liked to see the pretty things in the shops. Esther's mother had made herself ready for a walk by fastening a bright red shawl over her head. She never wore a hat or a bonnet, as do her American sisters. We will go to the market first, she told the children. I wish to buy some fruit. It was quite a long walk, and there was so much to see on the way, Esther and Miriam did not think of that. Do see that drove of donkeys, exclaimed their mother, after they had entered one of the principal streets. They are laden with goatskins filled with water, I suppose. Listen, children, there are Arab drivers calling to them. O.R., O.R., Derek, Derek, sounded the driver's voice. A small boy running down a byway mimicked the Arab. O.R., O.R., Derek, Derek. See that solemn old camel, said Esther. He is laden with stones. They must be very heavy. Poor old fellow. I don't blame him for growling at his master for trying to hurry him up. His growl rattles so. It seems to come from his inmost stomach, said the mother laughingly. Backsheesh! Backsheesh! yelled a beggar, sitting cross-legged against the wall of a house. The man was ragged and dirty. He held a tin pail before him. Kind-hearted people had dropped money, fruit, and vegetables into it as they passed by. There are many poor people of our own faith here in the city, said Esther's mother, as they went on their way. They really suffer for lack of food. That man is a Turk. It may be that he is really as poor as he looks and needs all the help he can get, but it is quite possible he has a comfortable home and only begs because it is an easy way of getting a living. Look, Mama, at that woman of Bethlehem, said Miriam. I know her by the dress. Miriam pointed to the dark blue robe. Stripes of bright red, mixed with gold, reached down the sides. The sleeves were large and long, and trimmed in the same way. The woman's white veil hung down from a tall cap. How heavy her cap must be, said Esther. It is like a crown. All the coins she owns are sewed on her cap, answered the mother. It tells everyone just how rich she is. I don't see how she does her work if she wears that robe all the time, said Miriam. The sleeves are so large, I should think they must be in the way. She probably ties them together behind her. I have been told that is the way. She can use them as pockets. I don't see how men ever get used to carrying such big loads, said Esther. She pointed to two porters who were bent nearly double. Their loads were strapped upon cushions fastened on their backs and held in place by straps around their heads. Each of those men must have almost as much of a load as a camel carries, said Esther's mother. It seems almost impossible, but it is true. It is a hard life, a very hard life. While she was speaking, they entered the market. The eyes of the little girls were kept busy looking at the many different things of interest. There were Arabs in charge of camels laden with melons, grapes, and figs. There were women selling vegetables and at the same time taking care of their babies. There were patient donkeys longing to be freed from the loads of goods which their masters were trying to sell. Mama, Mama, whispered Esther, there is a baby gazelle in the basket on that woman's head. It is even smaller than the one I saw at Rebecca's. I suppose she is trying to sell the little thing. Look at the woman beside her, said Miriam. She looks very tired. I suppose she has walked several miles from her own village with her baskets of fruit. Her baby boy sits on her shoulders crowing and laughing at every one who passes by. Come, children, we will go now to some shops where I must buy things not sold here, said Esther's mother. She led the way out of the market, and they entered a crowded street. There were Turks in their flowing robes, Arabs, Armenians, Syrians, and Jews. Almost all were gaily dressed, and many of them were handsome. The Arabs were either barefooted, or else they wore red or yellow slippers. They lift their feet as though they were passing over a desert, said Esther to Miriam, as they went by some Arabs. I should think they would suffer from the heat, answered her sister. Their heads look so big. 
I'm sure they have two or three caps under their turbans. Perhaps they think the more clothing they wear, the better the heat will be kept out, said their mother, who heard what they were talking about. Here is the shop I was looking for. We will go in. She led the way into a sort of cave cut into the soft rock. It was a dark, dingy little place. There were shelves around the sides of it. In the middle was a sort of counter, where the storekeeper sat with his goods around him. As Esther's mother entered, he slowly took his pipe from his mouth and stopped his gossiping with a friend who sat outside on the pavement. He was in no hurry, however. He acted more like a king on his throne than a trader who had to sell cloth for a living. "'Yellow plush, is it?' he asked. "'Ah, I have some beautiful, beautiful. It is the very thing.' But his customer was not easily satisfied, and after she had finally picked out the piece she wished, there was a long talk about the price. Both were satisfied at last. The plush was cut off and wrapped up, and the storekeeper was left to his own pleasure. Esther's mother still had some errands to do, so they visited several other stores. They were not all in caves, however, but most of them were small and dark. At last everything needed was purchased, and the lady and children started homeward. "'Look at the sky,' said Esther. "'Isn't it beautiful tonight?' The sun was almost setting. The clouds were turning a rosy red. They were so bright that the city itself seemed to share in their glory. "'Jerusalem the blessed,' said Miriam in a low voice. "'There is Papa. We are late about getting home, and so is he,' said Esther. "'Now we can have his company.' Her father had already seen his wife and the girls, and was smiling at them. It was a warm evening, yet he wore his fur-trimmed, round, velvet hat over the tight-fitting cap that never left his head in the daytime. A long lock of hair hung down on each side of his face, as it always did after he was dressed for the day. "'Bless you, my little ones,' he said, as Esther and Miriam each seized a hand. "'Now tell me what you have seen while you were shopping.' The children chattered as they do everywhere in the world. They described the market and the people, the camels and the shopkeepers. "'We were coming to your store when we found how late it was. Then we thought it would be closed, and you on your way home.' And so you were, said Esther laughingly. By the time the children reached their own door, they were so tired they thought only of bed and sleep. They were even too tired to care about their supper. But you must not slight your night prayer, said their father soberly. Esther's and Miriam's eyes winked and blinked a good many times before they got through the prayer. It never seemed so long before, except when I was sick, Esther told her adopted sister, when they were at last stretched on their beds. And, do you know, Miriam, she added sleepily, I believe Solomon doesn't always repeat it all. He says our people have so many prayers he gets tired of them sometimes. Isn't that dreadful? But Miriam was already sound asleep and did not answer. End of chapter 6